a function uh, which uh, doesn't make sense uh, if you are in the theory of distributions. And then uh, also we had another work with uh, Nurgesaya Serkigenov, um, who was uh, my PhD student at the time about uh, uh, hyperelliptic waves. So we considered wave equation again with, but for hyperelliptic operators, um, wave equation with time dependent coefficient. Uh, so uh, these were a series of works devoted to uh, some uh, evolution equations, mostly uh, uh, wave type equations for time dependent coefficients. But recently uh, also work started with um, for space dependent coefficients. So here uh, I can mention Claudia Garetta had a paper in transactions of um, uh, American Mathematical Society recently about uh, a wave equation with time with space dependent coefficient and notion of very weak solution for that. And uh, so, and now our work comes, um, it is in a series of papers uh, uh, with, uh, 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 so with, with two groups. One group was with uh, Niyaz uh, Takmagambetov and uh, Mohamed Sebi from Algeria and Arshin Altebay, also from Kazakhstan. Uh, now he defended his thesis in, in uh, computer science, uh, parallel computing. So he was doing some simulations for uh, high order. In his thesis, he was doing some uh, also notion of very weak solutions, but also with some simulations using parallel computing because uh, uh, high order equations are in the uh, equations uh, in, in, in uh, also wave equation, but in, in um, higher dimensions are uh, known to be uh, computationally difficult. So there was some, uh, so his uh, PhD thesis was about comparing different methods of parallel computing for this. But anyway, so we had this uh, paper in, in uh, for fractional Klein-Gordon equation and then another paper uh, for Schrodinger equation and we have another paper which I uh, don't mention here. Uh, so, sorry, Michael. Uh, Michael, need, some problem. Slide. Slide. Need to go. Slide. Here you can see. It. Is it moving? No. Ah no. Okay. Uh -huh. So uh, I see. Sorry. So maybe I stop share. Let me try again. Yeah. I open with. Uh, Acrobat. Uh huh. So, can you see now? Is it moving now? Ah, no. Wait. I I didn't share. Did I share? I didn't share. Uh, share. Is it, no. is, it, is it moving now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay. Moving. Thank you for telling me. Yes. So, anyway, so this is uh, the papers, and then uh, so these papers with. Uh, and then uh, more recently, and this is what I will talk about, it is uh, papers um, uh, last two, so with, with, uh, uh, about, um, about hyperelliptic cases. So now we extended this to hyperelliptic case. And this is what I will talk about. So this are just, uh, these two papers just accepted and another one, uh, there is one more about heat equation, but it is, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, it is. Uh, it is uh, here. Here we have the paper about heat equation with uh, uh, on Euclidean case, but here is hyperelliptic is uh, also uh, on archive, but uh, under consideration. So uh, yes. Yeah, so and, and now I, I talk about uh, to make it a bit more interesting. I will talk about groups also uh, because of course uh, to explain this notion we don't need groups, and uh, we don't need. Um, uh, uh, to deal with, with uh, uh, well, we don't need group structure, but uh, now I talk about, because I, I gave already talks, some talks about in the past about uh, Euclidean case. So now I uh, uh, report on the latest progress. So I, 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 I which, 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 which is, wasn't groups. So, and, and I just recall a notion of graded Lie group, which is um, quite, uh, uh, also some people familiar, but uh, one can think of, uh, for simplicity, if you want, uh, you can think of RN still, but uh, uh, you can also think of a group in the, in the sense that uh, uh, these uh, Nilpotent groups, in particular graded groups, this is a model when we can study um, hyperelliptic operators. Uh, there is a famous, um, uh, famous uh, 
uh, Rothschild Stein lifting theorem, uh, which uh, said that which says that if we have a hyper elliptic operator on on a manifold, then we can uh, approximate this operator uh, by by a group. We can consider vector fields which uh, participate in this operator, and then we can consider uh, structure. We can just consider the commutators, and then we can stop this. At some point, and we get a hyper elliptic operator on, on, on a graded group, nilpotent group, and and uh, then uh, the properties of this operator approximate very much the properties of original operator, and in particular, in particular, sub elliptic estimates, uh, Hermandras estimate for sub elliptic uh, uh, operators. That's how they get the optimal estimates. So Hermandras had hyper elliptic result, but uh, there was a question open for quite some time, what is the exact loss of derivatives? Hermann the sum of square theorem about hyper elliptic operators. So operator is hyper elliptic. It means uh, uh, um, if, if, if you have operator applied to distribution is smooth, then the distribution has to be a smooth function. And uh, uh, it was uh, open for some time that under Hermann the condition operator is hyper elliptic, but uh, how many derivatives do you lose compared to uh, elliptic operators, and then this precise order was um, uh, determined by Rothschild and Stein by this, uh, uh, by this uh, kind of uh, lifting theorem. There are different versions of lifting theorem. So she, uh, she Rothschild, she, she uh, continued this work further uh, by Holland and so on. But uh, this is not the topic here, but uh, I want to say that you can think of RN, but uh, you can also think a little bit in the setting of groups. And uh, namely, what does it mean? An important, so it's a Lie group, it's a manifold, but uh, uh, we impose some structure which allows to work with, um, uh, with um, hyper elliptic operators. So we have a tangent space, this Lie algebra, we decompose in the direct sum, uh, a finite sum, satisfying these commutator conditions here. And uh, if uh, then the group is called a graded group. And uh, in particular, we have like uh, uh, Euclidean space is the simplest example because all commutators is just zero. You, you can take the decomposition, just trivial decomposition into the whole space. If the commutators are zero, so you have, so Euclidean space certainly covered by this setting, but uh, also uh, we have Heisenberg group. Uh, more generally, we have stratified groups or Carnot groups graded groups, uh, homogeneous and nilpotent. So this is kind of inclusions. So we are in the setting of graded groups. And this is the most general setting where we can talk about hyper elliptic differential operators. So it's known that if we are on nilpotent Lie group and, and suppose we have a differential hyper elliptic operator, then the, the group has to be graded. It has to satisfy, we can put gradation satisfying this property. So. Uh, and um, so this is a homogeneous group. So there is a dilation structure. We can think of anisotropic. Anisotropic, uh, uh, this is kind of anisotropic analysis. When we treat, we can think of RN and we treat different directions with different degree. So dilation in different direction give us uh, different powers. And uh, we can think of this. Um, uh, so it's always we can think of RN. Uh, another uh, description of this group is that uh, we have Rn, but uh, Euclidean space, but we have a polynomial group law. So in the Euclidean space, we have a group law addition is linear, but uh, now suppose we have a, a Euclidean space Rn, but the group law is uh, instead of usual addition, linear addition, we consider, for example, quadratic or polynomial. Then this, then we get all the the classes of these groups. For example, on the Heisenberg group, it's just a uh, group addition is, uh, it's like three dimensional space, but addition is linear in the first variables, uh, but in the third variable, it is quadratic. So, uh, and then we have a group structure and then it's natural to, uh, then we have like different degree of homogeneity in different directions. So this is the, uh, uh, this setting and uh, also we can work with high order operators. These operators are called Rockland operators and uh, it allows us to consider evolutions to, uh, so we can consider, for example, on Rn, the first example is when we consider Rd 
and this is a high order operator. So these are so-called Rockland operators, but these are just constant coefficient operators which are hyperelliptic. And uh, but we can consider more general. So if we have different degrees of homogeneity, then the second example is um, uh, uh, like this. So so uh, the, the generality it it gives uh, more generality because we can work with uh, first of all we don't have to work with Laplacian. Uh, we can work with uh, high order operators. So the first case is, for example, is if M is two, it's a fourth order operator. So we can work with operators of high order already on our end, if you want. But uh, also this setting allows us to work with hyper elliptic operators. So not only this, this is elliptic, if we consider uh, on our end, this kind of operators are elliptic, but uh, operators, the second example, they are not elliptic, but uh, hyper elliptic. And uh, this is enough for uh, a lot of, uh, for, for many questions. So this is a convenient uh, uh, setting of groups uh, where we can work with this, um, uh, with this, with these operators. And so now let's uh, Klein Gordon. I start with Klein Gordon equation, and uh, here is uh, so I, as I said that that uh, in the previous works uh, we always studied time dependent coefficients. So this is kind of first works where we uh, uh, started considering space dependent coefficients also. And I should say there are many open questions and open problems uh, interesting to apply to linear, nonlinear. So here we just consider fractional derivatives and so on. But here we consider just uh, uh, a little bit. Uh, so this is like Glenn Gordon equation. If instead of this R to the power S, you put Laplacian on Rn, then this is uh, first is wave equation. And uh, there should be minus. Uh, so R is a positive operator, so there should be minus here. No, uh, there should be, uh, yeah, there should be, uh, no, no, it's okay because this is negative. This is negative. This is positive. So, so this is an operator like this. So, uh, if R of S is Laplacian, then we just consider Klein Gordon equation, which is wave equation with mass, time dependent mass m of x. So this is the equation, and uh, so again, I consider this equation on a graded Lie group, x in a graded Lie group. R is positive, Rockland homogeneous operator, but uh, you can think of this uh, on Rn if you. Um, don't want to complicate things and just think that G is a Ren, always Euclidean space, and uh, think of R being Laplacian, for example. And and the question is, how do we, so what to do if, uh, so the, the main question now is uh, consider this equation, even as I said, even on a Ren, but suppose M of X is a distribution. Suppose uh, M is, mass is, behaves like delta function. Uh, so what then what can we say about this equation? So this is a problem because uh, let's say M is delta function and suppose uh, data is also delta functions. So how do we understand this equation? And uh, clearly we cannot understand this in the sense of uh, Sobolev or we cannot understand it in the sense of distributions because uh, in this case, U may be distribution and then, but then we have to multiply it by another distribution. Right, so if, if m of x is, let's say if u zero of x is delta, u one is zero, u zero of x is delta, and m is delta, then uh, we immediately have a problem because uh, because uh, how do we multiply two delta functions? It is not 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 possible. There is uh, uh, this famous Schwarz impossibility result. It's a short note in the du of the French Academy that he wrote in the sixties. And uh, with an uh, example that if you assume that you can multiply distributions, you get a contradiction. So we know we cannot multiply distributions. And, and a lot of research has been devoted uh, different, uh, to different degree how to multiply, but there is no So how to understand this equation when we have to multiply distributions. So, and here is a notion of very weak solutions come, comes in then which allows us to, uh, uh, consider the well to discuss well poseness of these equations. Very weak well poseness. So, but let me first start with the classical estimate. So we have this uh, 
again, if, uh, so if we consider of R is delta and uh, nu is the order of the operator R, so if R is delta, nu is two, then this is just the usual homogeneous Sobolev space here. But on, on, on uh, graded Lie groups, we can consider homogeneous Sobolev spaces in the same way. Uh, so this is the usual Sobolev space. And uh, we start with a classical solution. So here we prove the following estimate that uh, uh, suppose M is bounded function. There are two cases which are somehow included into this theorem. So the second case M is in the Sobolev space. This will be uh, useful sometimes, but uh, uh, suppose M is a bounded function here, then this classical situation, because if M is a bounded function, then we can multiply. Still, we can multiply bounded function by uh, bounded functions. We can multiply by continuous function. But already, already, uh, yeah, we can we can multiply. But already, so okay. M, M is a bounded function. Then uh, uh, suppose u zero, u one belong to this u uh, zero in the Sobolev space. U uh, one is in this L two space. Then the the, pro the theorem is that. Uh, there exists unique classical solution, classical because uh, uh, it's a solution in Sobolev spaces. So classical is weak, weak solution, we could we should say. But uh, there exists unique, uh, but by now Sobolev solutions, we can say classical. Uh, and, and we have this estimate. So if M is in L infinity, we have this first estimate. If M is in the Sobolev space, intersection of two Sobolev spaces, we have this other estimate. So, but anyway, so the point here is that we start with a classical solution with a situation when M is regular. So as I said, we are interested in the situation when M is, for example, delta function or derivative of delta function. So when M is very singular, this is what we're interested in, but uh, the first step is what happens when M is sufficiently regular, like uh, bounded function, then it's, it's uh, quite easy to prove this, uh, statement by energy method uh, that we have the L well poseness um, in the of this this equation and uh, so and now very weak solutions so very weak solutions we i need a couple of definitions uh, we we consider so we will interpret a solution not as a function or as a distribution but as a family as a family of regular functions so this is, um, so um, as I said, I gave like this, uh, uh, this notion was introduced already uh, 2015, but then uh, it was evolving a little bit. So here actually in these papers, we will propose a new notion of uniqueness, but, um, uh, uh, but basically uh, this is, um, the idea is that we, inter we understand solution, not as a single, uh, function or a distribution, but as a family of regular functions. <coughs> One can uh, think of some approximating family, but the question is what, what, what kind of families do we call solutions? And uh, here is uh, some technical definition. We consider F epsilon, uh, again, as I said, you can think of uh, G being Rn and X, suppose X is some norm space like L2. Uh, and then we say we consider family F epsilon in this space, and we say that this family is moderate, X moderate, if uh, the family of norms of F epsilon blows up as epsilon goes to zero, but uh, uh, polynomially. So if, if epsilon of X can be, a, a pro, can be estimated by some constant uh, times epsilon to the power minus n, then we say that the family is moderate. And uh, we also say that a net is uh, negligible. In particular, we will compare two nets and we say that the difference between two nets is negligible with respect to x if uh, the difference in the norm x is bounded by epsilon to the power k for any k. So there are these two notions and uh, uh, in, 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 in the Colombo theory, for example, you would take now a quotient of moderate nets by negligible nets, and then you will try to prove that what you get is an algebra, but uh, it doesn't have to be an algebra. That's, that's an advantage, big advantage of uh, 
uh, notion of very weak solutions compared to, for example, Colombo theory, because in Colombo theory, once you consider a quotient, you want to prove that it is an algebra. And if it is not an algebra, then uh, basically you don't have a theory. And we have now many examples of PDEs when uh, you consider such quotient and it's not an algebra. So uh, the, the advantage of the notion of very weak solutions is that it doesn't require us to check uh, these kind of properties. And, and uh, there is another definition that if, if a function depends on T and X, then we say that uh, uh, it's C1 moderate if uh, so U plus derivative in these norms again behave like epsilon to the power minus n. So here we are free to give uh, whatever definitions we want, of course, as, as uh, often in mathematics we can give uh, definitions, um, uh, crazy definitions, but then the question is what can, we can prove with these definitions. So here is are these definitions and then uh, uh, and, and, and I will explain a little bit uh, because this is uh, why is these definitions? Because uh, we can think of now um, the following steps that we can we can think of um, like a sequential theory of distributions. Uh, what is sequential theory of distributions? Is that when when we uh, have a distribution, instead of each distribution, we can think of a sequence of smooth functions. Like uh, what is a delta? Like uh, what happened in physics? A direct delta function. Uh, what, what is direct delta function? Uh, then the, the physical interpretation was a family of smooth functions, which uh, some family depending on epsilon with uh, uh, integral equal to one, but the support going to a point, right? So if you have a family of compactly supported smooth functions with support in the ball with radius epsilon, but with total integral one, then as epsilon goes to zero, then we get uh, kind of a delta distribution, which is delta function, which is a function with support at a point, but with total mass equal to one. And we know it's not possible in the sense of uh, measure theory. Uh, so that's why the theory of distributions appeared, how to interpret such objects as functionals and so on, or Sobolev theory, uh, still functionals. And, uh, but uh, so, but, uh, now we have this modern theory of distribution, but this is kind of uh, another theory exists where we can think of distributions as uh, families of smooth functions. And uh, how to get this family from a distribution, it is by convolution. So we can consider, so we, if V is a distribution and uh, Psi is a Friedrichs mollifier, then we can consider a family Psi epsilon here uh, and uh, so, and then we can think of, um, so this is a family which I described, this is dilation. So we have dilation, but again, you can think of multiplication by epsilon minus one in the case of Rn. And then with this family, we can see the convolution and uh, we get a family V epsilon of smooth functions, which approximates V in some sense, <coughs> which converges to V, for example, in the distributional sense. And if V is delta function, then we get that convolution with delta function is just psi epsilon. So it is uh, just uh, a family which I described, original family by Dirac. But uh, we can think of this, uh, of family V epsilon as an approximation. And uh, what happens is that uh, that's why we get notion of moderateness because if V is a compactly supported distribution, then uh, its regularization is, uh, moderate with respect to LP or with respect to HS. So moderateness with respect to this definition it means that when we consider norm of this family, it blows up as epsilon to the power minus N as epsilon goes to zero. So here is the same, is a simple observation that uh, if you start with the distribution, then its regularization is a, a moderate family. And uh, so this is, um, uh, why it's natural when we are talking about distributions to we can replace distributions by uh, regularizations. The regularizations when uh, which we have this moderate behavior. But of course, every distribution will give us a regularizing family, 
but uh, the other direction is not true. If I start with a family of smooth functions, it doesn't have to correspond to some distribution. Uh, and so now comes definition of a very weak solution. Uh, basically what happens is the following. We regularize, I will try to explain first and then I will uh, say the, uh, how this can be formulated rigorously. But uh, basically we start with M being a distribution and we regularize M. So suppose M is a delta function, then M epsilon is, is regularization of M. So M epsilon is a family of smooth functions. And then for each epsilon, we consider the same equation. So we, we uh, let's say data is, uh, we can also regularize data, but for simplicity, let's say we consider, we regularize M, we get a family M epsilon for each M. And then we consider the same equation with the same data, but with uh, M replaced by M epsilon. And uh, this we can solve because M epsilon is bounded function. Then we can apply this uh, proposition, which I showed here, because if M is bounded, then there is a nice solution. <coughs> okay. So then we do it here. So we put, instead of M, we put M epsilon. And then we solve this equation and we get a family U epsilon. And now the definition is that uh, we will have a, uh, U epsilon is a very big solution if uh, what we get U epsilon is a moderate family itself. So U epsilon doesn't have to correspond to a distribution anymore. It cannot correspond to distribution because if we started with M being a delta function, then uh, we know that we cannot plug in U as a distribution because then we would have, we would not even be uh, able to understand the equation. Uh, because we cannot multiply distribution. So we know that U does not correspond to some, U epsilon does not correspond to some distribution, but we get a family of U epsilon, which can still be moderate. And if it happens that U epsilon is moderate, then we say that this family U epsilon is a very big solution. And the rigorous definition says that if, uh, of course we can regularize M epsilon, it's not because we, we regularize with the Friedrichs mollifier, but uh, it's not unique this regularization. So we say that if there exists regularization of M such that the solution U epsilon, which solves this equation is a regular, regu is a moderate family. Then we say that the family U epsilon is a very weak solution to this problem. So as I said, there is not uniqueness in how we regularize. So we say if there exists regularization and uh, also I can be a little bit vague because uh, here I say in the case of uh, if M is a distribution, we can uh, uh, regularize with the Friedrichs mollifier. But if M epsilon is, we can consider even even stronger singularities like delta squared. Again, delta squared does not make sense in the sense of distributions, but we can think of delta squared as a family of M epsilon squared. So if M, if M epsilon regularizes delta, then we can think of delta squared as a family of M epsilon squared. Then this definition of very big solution still makes sense. And so, and again, as I said, we can give different definitions, but what we can prove. So now the results come, but before, so what I said here is that uh, uh, if M happens to be distributions and, uh, uh, and we take M epsilon to be a Friedrich regularization, then it's automatically moderate. So uh, we just have to check that the family of solutions U epsilon is moderate. And, but we can consider stronger singularities. M is uh, formally delta squared. We can think of delta squared as, as a family uh, psi epsilon squared where psi epsilon approximates delta. And still the notion of very big solutions makes sense. So you see that this notion allows us to deal with very strong, uh, very singular objects. And, uh, and so there are several theorems. So the first theorem is existence. So we, we uh, introduced the notion of uh, very big solution. So we want to show exist. Uh, uh, so what is the properties of good notion of solution? It's, it's uh, well, the first property is existence. So namely the theorem is that if we start with uh, da data here, but M is uh, let's say distribution or M, M has, uh, regular L infinity moderate regularization, 
then the Cauchy problem that we consider has a very big solution. So the client golden equation with a singular coefficient mass m of x has a very big solution. So this existence statement that uh, we have uh, existence of solution. Uh, so we can relax here. I said that we can start with data to be in the distribution. Uh, then we have to, distributions and we have to regularize them a little bit as well. But uh, so we have different versions of this theorem, but I give maybe the simplest one that uh, existence. So it has this klein gordon equation has this singular mass has a very big solution. Uh, uniqueness, again, uh, so existence is uh, good, but of course it's uh, even better when we have uniqueness, but we have to define uniqueness, right? Because there may be different notions of uniqueness, even for classical partial differential equations, uh, we can see uniqueness uh, even for the Sobolev kind of, um, yeah, for Sobolev weak uh, solutions, we can see uniqueness maybe when two functions are equal to each other point-wise, or they can be equal to each other almost everywhere, or they can be equal to each other in some Sobolev space, or distributionally. So uniqueness depends very much on the definition of uniqueness. So here is a natural definition, which we propose is that, uh, again, because we deal with uh, here, I, I deal with different uh, sets of assumptions. So we can say that, uh, so the solution is uh, unique with respect to two norms, x, x norm spaces, x and y. It's unique if, because you remember, it, it's, it's, as, as I said, uh, it depends how, it, there is no unique regularization of m epsilon, of m, because even when we consider Friedrich's molyf convolution with Friedrich's modifiers, there are different modifiers then uh, point-wise they may be different. So we get different families of epsilon, which will give us different families of solutions u epsilon, point-wise. These are smooth functions, which are maybe different, depend on the Friedrich's modifier, depending on the Friedrich's modifier, we get different u epsilon. These are, let's say, regular families, but uh, point-wise, almost everywhere, they may be not give us different families. So here is a definition that uh, if for all regularizations, so whatever regularization we take, m epsilon or f m epsilon tilde, if the difference of between m epsilon and m epsilon tilde is negligible with respect to the y norm, then it follows that this, the difference between solutions in L2 is uh, also negligible. Yeah, so negligible in L2. So this is a definition that if you start with, uh, uh, so this, this is a definition here is that for all, we start with all nets which are moderate in X, such that uh, the difference is negligible in Y, then it follows that the solutions in L2 are, the difference is negligible. And then in, if this property holds, then we say that uh, we have uh, uniqueness of the very big solution. And now the theorem is that, so let's say that um, uh, there are some remarks uh, maybe I can uh, let me skip these remarks because it's not much time remaining, but uh, basically the uniqueness theorem is the following, that if we have some reasonable assumptions, for example, yeah, we can assume that the data are in uh, distributions or uh, so we, we uh, this is just a way that to write that we can assume anything we want, like we can assume Sobolev data, we can assume distributional data. But uh, the theorem is that we have uniqueness of very big solutions according to this definition. And there are two spaces. So we have this, uh, depending on the, uh, we have all this, so we have four uniqueness statements. Uh, so it depends on the moderateness. In which space we measure moderateness of the approximation family, we get the uniqueness of the, in the corresponding space. So basically it says that the, the, the very big solutions exist by the previous theorem. Uh, here it says it is unique uh, by this theorem. And, uh, and uh, finally, one more property, because consistency, uh, this is the following, because uh, let me say, what is, con what is consistency? Uh, when we introduce a notion of solutions, we want this to be consistent with uh, stronger families of solutions, with stronger solutions, if they exist. For example, if let's consider like you, you can consider 
uh, differential equation uh, which has a smooth solution. And then you can suppose you know there is smooth solution, but then you also know that there is Sobolev weak solution. What you want to have is that uh, you can recover that they correspond to each other. That the, the smooth solution which you get is uh, you can recover from the Sobolev's uh, weak solution. And uh, so it may happen that you consider a partial differential equation. It, it has Sobolev. It has a weak solution uh, according to Sobolev. And uh, you may have no smooth solution. And then you're happy with Sobolev solution because it gives you solutions that you can work with. But you can, ideally, if, of course, if you, are, if you have a smooth solution, you're also happy, more happy. But uh, if there is no smooth solution, then uh, we are satisfied with Sobolev's weak solution. But suppose you know that there is also a smooth solution, then uh, you want you don't want that these two completely independent. You want that the smooth function is uh, the smooth solution that you get is uh, comes from the Sobolev weak solution. And uh, if you have uh, and this goes for, for further, if you have distributional solution, suppose you have distributional solution, but you also have Sobolev solution, weak solution, which is uh, locally integrable. Then you want to know you want to uh, have that this uh, two the distributional solution and, and weak solution are compatible. And if it happens, you have also smooth solutions and you want that they're also compatible, that distribution, that, that distributional solution that you get is the same as a smooth solution, if some smooth solution exists. So here, this is consistency. And here we want to have the same. If we know, if you have a very weak solution, we proved already existence and uniqueness, but suppose that we know that there is also a smooth solution, or we know that there is a Sobolev solution. We want them to correspond to each other. And this is consistency statement, which is uh, the following theorem. It says the following, let's put uh, conditions that, uh, let me see. Yeah, so let, let's put conditions under which we know uh, the very first theorem, which I showed that if M is regular, we know that there exists a classical solution in some of the so and, and in this situation we have two solutions we have uh, on one hand so suppose m epsilon so we say that this is so this is the date and suppose m is regular so suppose m is here or suppose m is continuous uh, let's say bounded uh, we here we assume a little bit more but uh, suppose m is a nice function uh, sobel function uh, or as i said continuous bounded function when when we know that the solution so solution exists in Sobolev spaces. So by the first theorem, which I showed, if I go back uh, this proposition here that I started with, we say that if M is in the Sobolev spaces or M is bounded, then there exists a solution in Sobolev spaces. So this we call classical Sobolev solution. Uh, so we have two solutions. One, one is the solution in the Sobolev space but uh, we also have a very weak solution because I just proved the statement that we have existence in the uniqueness of a very weak solution. So the question is how the Sobolev solution is, uh, is it compatible with the very weak solutions that we get? And this theorem consistency shows exactly this property that uh, uh, if M is regular, so if one of these conditions, conditions is satisfied, then what we get is that the family U epsilon that we get in the very weak solution converges as epsilon goes to zero to the Sobolev solution in L2. So it means that this is compatibility or consistency. Uh, we call it that uh, the very weak solution that we get is consistent with the Sobolev solution if the Sobolev solution exists. And uh, for some here we have these statements, but for other equations that we consider there are also, so if, if, if we get, we can say that if there is a smooth solution, then uh, it converges as epsilon goes to zero in the strong topology of smooth functions. If there is a L2 solution, it converges in L2. If there is a distributional solution, it converges in the distributional topology. So this is consistency statement that these, are, uh, these, these uh, statements are consistent. Okay, so then, uh, uh, Alaberin, how much time do I have? So how many uh, you need? Just I, I can uh, if you tell me I can I will just decide what what how, how much time you. Five minutes maybe. 
five minutes. Okay, so just I want to show you. So I, I explained this in detail. Now I want to show how uh, the same way of thinking. Um, so I explained Klein Gordon equation in detail. Let's now take Schrodinger equation and show similar things. So Schrodinger equation. So Schrodinger equation is a difference. I put I here. So instead of UTT, I put I UT. Here I take the same operator. Here I say the I say I, I take P of X again. The same situation. This is a Schrodinger equation. What if P is irregular? So the potential P is uh, again suppose it's a distribution. Then Schrodinger equation doesn't make sense uh, in the theory of distributions. But uh, in with the th this new theory of very big solutions, we have existence, uniqueness, and consistency. This is what I will show. So first. The procedure is the same. So first, if P is regular, P is in L infinity, or in the intersection of Sobolev spaces, we prove that uh, there exists unique solution classical in the Sobolev space, satisfying this estimate. This is the first step. Then we define the very weak solutions. Uh, so the definition, so this is very similar to Sobolev situation, because in the uh, Sobolev definition of very of weak solutions, the definition of solution depends on the equation, right? It's not, uh, this is a difference between Schwartz theory of distributions. Uh, you say the distribution, that solution is a distribution. Then it has distributional solution. So you uh, look for solutions in the space of distribution. So the notion of solution in the in Schwartz theory does not depend on the equation. However, for Sobolev, the notion of solution depends on the equation because you say that if uh, it's a weak solution, if some integral, and 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 uh, in integral you do integration by parts, and this depends on the equation. So the notion of weak solutions of Sobolev depends on the equation. So here, that's why we call it very weak solutions because again this is more close to Sobolev approach than to Schwarz uh, because notion of solutions depends on the equation. So here we define it again. So if uh, but it's similar in spirit. But it depends on the equation in each case. So if if there exist a, if there exist a, a, a moderate approximation of the coefficient p, such that when we consider the equation with p epsilon, we get solution u epsilon, which we know by the previous theorem that u epsilon exists. If u epsilon happens to be moderate, then we say that the family u epsilon is a very big solution. And moderate with respect to this uh, Sobolev norm. So with this notion of very weak solution, we have uh, so we have uniqueness again. Uniqueness in this similar way. If uh, we consider two families, p epsilon, p epsilon tilde, such that the difference is negligible, then we say that uh, very weak solution is unique. Uh, if so, if the fact that p and minus p epsilon, uh, p epsilon minus p epsilon tilde is negligible implies that. The u epsilon minus u epsilon tilde corresponding solutions are negligible in L2. Then we say that the very weak solution is unique. And then we have the theorem that uh, the very weak solution exists and it is unique. Uh, so we have the existence and uniqueness of very weak solutions. And we have also, we have also this um, uh, theorem of uh, uh, consistency saying that if p happens to be regular then we have a solution then we have solution with respect to this theorem uh, which we sell sobolev solution and we have very big solution according to the second theorem and they are compatible so if if so again if p is regular then uh, if we take limit of u epsilon as epsilon goes to zero in l2 then we get the sobolev solution u which we get solution in l2 um, by the by the first theory. Okay, so we have the existence, uh, uniqueness, and consistency. And uh, so here, as I said, I'm uh, okay. So I have to finish. So I will say that this is uh, continuation of these first two papers. So we have a paper. So we have a paper uh, about the Gordon equation, about Schrodinger equation. These two, and we also have uh, a result about uh, about uh, uh, in this respect, we have result also about heat equation, and uh, so this. Uh, but there are more recent works. Uh, one uh, in particular, this was also part of the thesis of Arshin, uh, tsunami equation. So we consider applications to tsunami equation, 
and to, as I said before, acoustic equations. So, but there here, the, the feature of this works is that we have X dependent coefficient, not, not time depend, dependent. And we uh, consider this quite generally uh, in the sense that, that we uh, consider hyper elliptic operators. As I said, if, if we have time dependent coefficients and we looked at this wave equation like this, in the paper with Nurgasai Serkigenov, but here the feature is that we consider X dependent coefficients and the, the method seems to work as well as for time dependent coefficients. Okay, so I think that I uh, stop now. So thank you for your attention. Thanks, Mikhail, for a nice talk, a valuable talk. Now about questions, advance, discuss, Please. Uh, Mikhail, I, when I see a Schrodinger equation, I see second condition, uh, but starting point. I think maybe you will see inverse problem. Ah. <laughs> what happens in <laughs> this? So sorry, this is type, oh. should be removed. This is, uh, there is only yeah, one. Yeah, thing. yeah, yeah, this is, this yes, is. Uh, yes. Uh, this was uh, unfortunate copy and paste from the from the Klein Gordon. So this is only one condition. Yeah, 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 sure. But uh, here direct problem. Do you make something like for inverse problem? Ah, interesting question. Yes, interesting question. So in fact, uh, in fact, uh, yeah, this is an interesting question. In inverse problems, we we haven't considered yet. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. Uh, there are people who want to consider. In fact, uh, somebody recently applied for a postdoctoral uh, application and, and uh, with an idea of doing inverse problems for these irregular coefficients as well to come to work again. So it is certainly an interesting question uh, which uh, can be considered. Uh, uh, we can consider the inverse problem and uh, of course, uh, yeah, if, if uh, P is irregular, then uh, uh, so of course this is, uh, but this is kind of a different, uh, it's, 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 it's uh, again, then one will have to understand in which sense one recovers. So it's not point yeah, sure, it is. because here it depends on the, uh, yeah, one has to make relevant definitions and then to see that everything works. So here, the point here is that we have to, even before we talk about inverse problems and so on, we have to understand what is the solution, right? We have to yeah, yeah, sure. what is the solution? We have to have uh, solvab well posedness, solvability of the uh, direct problem. So, and this is a good base. Then we can consider further questions like, inverse problems and we can consider like what is some propagation of singularities we can consider different properties of solutions because here pro uh, singularities propagate we can consider non-linear terms uh, so all these questions can be considered but the first basis basic step is how do we do we understand in which sense solutions of uh, uh, linear equation and, and and as i said if p is delta then Sobolev solutions don't exist uh, Schwarz distributional solutions do not exist. So, but but physically, uh, physicists work with this equation. So, what is the notion of uh, solutions that we can propose so that we have well posedness with respect to this notion? And then we can, once we have this very big solution, we can investigate further properties of these very big solutions, uh, including inverse problem or, as I said, propagation of singularities or blow up in time for non-linear equations. So all these questions can be considered on, on, on the basis of very weak solutions. Thanks. Uh, one okay. question. Okay. Uh, uh, do you consider uh, the wave equations, the generating uh, wave equation? Uh, yes, yeah, so here uh, we considered, uh, yes, Sharipovich, good question. Uh, yes, yes. As, as always, good question. So, uh, wave oh. equations. We oh, yes, 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 yes. In these no. papers, we considered wave equations, but with uh, with uh, time dependent coefficient, time dependent propagation speed. Uh, no. A question: wave equation with x dependent propagation speed. We uh, so partly Claudia considered here. Claudia Garrett in this paper. 
Uh, so for us, uh, so she can wave equation with X dependent coefficient. She considered this very recent paper. Um, uh, so, but this shows that you see that this, um, if you look at the journals, these transactions of American Mathematical Society, it means that this this notion somehow gets it's a new notion of very weak solutions, but it somehow gets accepted by the mathematical community because um, some rather good journals consider these uh, papers and uh, in, indeed it's a good question that x dependent coefficients so she considered uh, x dependent propagation speed in front of the laplacian and we consider not only wave equation we consider other types of equations but with singularity in the potential term it is a period, uh, problem uh, small coefficients for generating uh, baby equations. It can be small, but here the irregular. So our kind of smallness, but it, it, smallness, it, yes, uh, yes. can be small, but it's irregular. So the main issue is here, not that something becomes large, but because something is irregular. And uh, it, it's a fundamental question. It's not that we have blow up. The problem, uh, that, uh, yes, yes. the problem is that we cannot even understand what is the equation if i put here as i said if you put delta instead of m of x then we don't understand what how to understand this equation you can think of uh, also um, equations that uh, you consider in uh, like, let's say uh, elliptic equations the same you can consider but put some delta function in front of the laplacian then this solution would not make sense. You cannot consider this equation in the theory of distributions. Uh, uh, positive, uh, positive, yeah, positive here. Uh, positive yeah, yeah. here, not to positive. have any problems. Positive operator, yes. Yes, yes, positive, yes. Positive operator, yes. So, more question, advanced. Allah uh, bring Hoca. Can I, uh, first of all, I would like to um, uh, greeting all uh, uh, mathematicians, uh, but, but here, uh, particularly uh, dear Shokat uh, Arifjanovic Alimov. I am very glad to see. Uh, 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 and I would like to ask uh, Professor uh, Mikhail Uzunsk, what, what uh, when you consider such a problem with uh, weak solution, very strong weak solution, uh, for in case of linear Schrodinger equation, uh, is it, it is possible to consider uh, uh, what here you um, show uh, uh, time regularity? It is possible uh, uh, to have the result for, to, um, to space uh, regularity estimate for linear case for Schrodinger equation. But uh, so again, if 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 m is if m is regular, this is uh, space regularity, right? Uh, this is point twice in time. This is okay in, in time we say continuous, uh, but space regularity is here in these estimates, right? So this we say that u is uh, this is the space in in space it's Sobolev in the Sobolev space derivative is in the two. I, I, I mean uh, what the estimate uh, for the. Uh, with respect to the space variable, uh, space variable, uh, with respect to with respect to x. Yes, this estimates with respect to x, because uh, here it's it's uh, dot is x and it's sobolev space uh, sobolev yes, yes, yes. estimates with respect to x. So these are uh, these are more these are exactly estimates with respect to x. Okay, no question. And I have a question. Okay. Uh, professor, thanks. Thank you very much for this nice talk. Uh, I want to ask about the consistency. Uh, the very weak solutions consistent with uh, Sobolev weak solutions. Is it true for in any case or is it depends on equation to equation? You should check this, this uh, reality consistency. We have to check it, and uh, this is a problem with. Uh, well, fortunately, in the equations when we, which we consider, we have these properties, 
which shows that the notion of very weak solutions is a good notion because uh, we have consistency. But let me say that uh, I mentioned Colombo theory and in Colombo theory, even suppose we have an algebra property and so on, uh, often consistency is missing. Uh, Colombo solution is, uh, if there is Colombo solution, if there is weak solution, they are not related. So this is one, from my point of view, this is one of the uh, drawbacks of the Colombo theory and one of the advantages here, because uh, in, in, most, in all the cases that we consider, uh, so in all the papers that we have written for different equations, we always have consistency statement. But it has to be checked. It's not, it's not automatic. There is some argument, there is a proof of this. Thanks. Thank you very much. Okay, more question. <laughs> no question. Thanks again for a nice yeah. talk. Mikhail uh, uh, Next, our meeting is uh, 8 February. Uh, by but uh, speaker our speaker professor albert canaba from spain so you are okay we will meet next next week if somebody uh, think about uh, talking please send me information you are welcome thanks thanks Thank you for excellent report this cycle. Thank you, colleagues. Bye. Bye. Thank you very much.